Hi guys, this is Phil Evangelinos and this is another episode from my series, New Light, where I consider major teachings of the Watchtower and test the validity, right, against sound Bible interpretation. I always offer the methods of my interpretation, or like the Watchtower. Now, whether you are a Jehovah's Witness or not, I invite you to critically examine these teachings and draw your own conclusion, right? So, we all heard of the word rapture. That has become a popular uh, word, a phrase by the Left Behind series, uh, and of course by countless books and films written on this subject. So, what is the rapture? In few words, it is the teaching mainly based on 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13 to 17, that Christians will be removed from the earth by Jesus Christ before the Great Tribulation, leaving behind the unbelieving mankind to go through all the wars and calamities of the time of the end. Now, the word rapture comes from the Latin, Latin rapturo or rapturo, which is the translation of the Greek word, Greek word harpazo, as it appears in 1 Thessalonians, and means to snatch away, okay? Uh, so the teaching is in its current form. Uh, it grew out of the translation of the Bible that John Darby analyzed in 1833. And, it's, and in, in its current form is mostly popular amongst American evangelicals. Now, most mainstream Christian denominations do not subscribe to the teaching of rapture. Uh, Catholics, Anglicans, Eastern Orthodox Church, and of course, Jehovah's Witnesses do not accept this teaching in its current form. So, let's consider the verses in question first, and then see what is the Watchtower's latest position on this teaching. That's what we do every time, we consider the latest position of the Watchtower. So the verses come from 1 Thessalonians 4, and verses 13 to 18. And there, Paul writes to the Thessalonians, Moreover, brothers, do not, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who are sleeping in death, so that you may not sorrow as the rest do who have no hope. For if we have faith that Jesus died and rose again, so too God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in death through Jesus. For this is what we tell you by Jehovah's word. But this is the New World Translation. It has word Jehovah everywhere. So this is what we tell you by Jehovah's word. That we the living who survive to the presence of the Lord. Will in no way precede those who have fallen asleep in death. Because the Lord himself will descend from heaven. With a commanding call. With an archangel's voice. And God's trumpet. And those who are dead in union with Christ will rise first. Afterward, in verse 17, we read, Afterward, with the living who are surviving will together with them be caught away in clouds. Or harpazo, that's where the word rapture or rapturo comes from. Okay, snatch away. To meet the Lord in the air, and thus we will always be with the Lord. So, Keep comforting one another with these words. So that's the famous verses where the teaching of rapture comes from. And this is how the New World renders the verses, which are fraught with biased translation to feed their narrative, but more on that later. Now let's consider some one style publications that have dealt with this subject or struggled with it, as it seems, in the past. Now, according to the Reasoning of the Scriptures publication, do you remember that little brown book with answers to questions or tricky answers to the householders in the ministry they used to use back in the 80s and 90s? So from that book, there's a whole section about the rapture. These verses are not referring, the, it says that, these verses are not referring to a specific future event, but to the general hope of heavenly life after death. We read, evidently some members of the Christian congregation in Thessalonica, Thessalonica had died. Paul encouraged the survivors to comfort one another 
with the resurrection hope. The book carries on saying he reminded them that Jesus was resurrected after his death, so too at the coming of the Lord. Those faithful Christians among them who had died would be raised to be with Christ. Okay, so this is, and I will include also the link of this article below from the Reasoning 2 Scriptures, uh, the little brown book that I used in the past. Now, more recently, the Watchtower, the 15th of July 2015, started the article in paragraph 15 under the subtitle Signing Brightly in the King Kingdom had this to say about the teaching of the rapture. Also, I will include, include all these this links below um, this video. So, what did this article from 2015, the study article, had to say about the rapture? It says this, does this mean that there will be a rapture of the anointed ones? Many in Christendom believe, according to this teaching, that Christians will be bodily caught up from the earth. Then they expect that Jesus will visibly return to rule the earth. However, the article continues, the Bible clearly shows that the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and that Jesus will come on the clouds of the heaven. I don't understand why they connect rapture with the sign of the man from Matthew 24:30. Nevertheless, the article continues. Both of these expressions imply invisibility. Additionally, flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom, so those who will be taken to heaven will first need to be changed in a moment, in the blink of an eye during the last trumpet. And they quote for that 1 Corinthians 15, 50-53, which are some other verses, I won't go through them today, about the rapture. Therefore, the article says, while we do not use the term rapture here because of its wrong connotation, the remaining faithful anointed will be gathered together in an instant of time. Now, if that didn't make sense to you, it didn't make sense to me back then when I read it, let me break it down for you. First, they don't like the word rapture because of its wrong connotation. What's wrong connotation? Obviously, they don't explain what the wrong connotation is, but I gather they don't like being associated with evangelical or Protestant Christianity because they have their own brand of Christianity to promote and they don't want to mix their doctrines with the doctrines of the evangelicals, even if the doctrines of the evangelicals are correct. Secondly, they make two nonsensical claims. They make out that the teaching of rapture implies that Jesus will appear visibly to collect the faithful ones and that they will be caught bodily from the earth. Yes, these are false arguments that people teaching the rapture don't promote, they don't concentrate on these aspects. So I don't see why the Watchtower would make such claims. This is not what the rapture is about, this is not what this real mechanics is, I can only assume that the Woodstar writers have only a cursory understanding of the teaching since they are not allowed to engage with apostate material. And of course, Christendom's teachings and writings are apostate material to them. Now, let's see the two real reasons why the Woodstar would never get on board with this teaching. And it wasn't in that article. The first reason is because they believe that only a small number of anointed Christians, the 144,000, are going to heaven, whereas the rest are left here on earth to live forever in a paradise earth. This is unique to the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is because, unlike any other Christian denomination, they believe in a class system. The anointed and the great crowd. This is not true, and it is a false teaching, as we, you probably already know, that Jesus or the apostles or the apostles never taught. There will only be there will only ever be one class of Christians. In fact, you can see this class in these verses we just saw earlier. 
1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. And if you missed it, it is because the word style deliberately mistranslates the verse to fit the odd narrative and doctrine of these two classes. Let's read again from 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 this time and see that there is only one class of Christians here that, Jesus is, sorry, that Paul is referring to. It says, because the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a commanding call with an archangel's voice and with God's trumpet and those uh, who are dead in union with Christ will rise first. Afterward, we, the living who are surviving, will together with them be caught away in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we will always be with the Lord. Now, do you see this phrase in union with Christ? It sounds a little bit strange. This is a mistranslation of the original in Christian which means the original actually says in Christ, not in union with Christ, and Christo. To be in Christ is to be a Christian, and there will only ever be one class of Christians, as the verse says. The dead in Christ, that in, is the Christians that died in the past 2,000 years after the death of Christ, and the alive in Christ, the ones that are alive Christians during Christ's return. And they both share the same privileges, privileges and the same destination, which is in heaven. Now, what that heaven is, it will be a part of a different video. But for the time being, they're all same class and they're all going up to heaven. So there's so much more to this phrase to be Christ. But this material also is part for another video. So this is the first reason. They have two classes and therefore they can only have two different destinies. What is the second reason? The what's our teaches that the great crowd of Christians will survive the great tribulation. And if this is, a, this is the case, you can't have all Christians going up during the rapture that happens before the great tribulation, right? That would create a major problem with prophetic timeline. In fact, they quote Revelation 7:14, where we read, it's the famous verses about the great crowd. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. And I and they have washed, sorry, and they have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And the verse continues because of our many years of indoctrination, we naturally assume that the great crowd are Christians. Okay? Or more precisely, eight million Jehovah's Witnesses Christians that will survive the great tribulation. That's what we always believe. We believe we're going to go through the great tribulation and not be raptured before that. That couldn't be further away from the truth. In fact, if you miss the rapture and you find yourself still living during the great tribulation, this is a curse, not a blessing, and the worst of fates. Of the worst of fates. And very likely God has not found you worthy joining him in heaven. I will revisit this subject, but for the time being, let's just say that the great crowd are not Christians. There are no Christians here on earth during the great tribulation. They have all left during the rapture. So we consider the two main reasons why the Watchtower are not accepting the rapture. They believe in two classes of Christians, when in fact there's only one, and they believe that they're all going to go after the great tribulation into paradise and therefore uh, they cannot go up in rapture. So they can't accept this doctrine. Now, my first reaction towards the concept of the rapture when I came across it after I left the Woods Tower was I thought it was foreign to what I, was, I knew so far. All right? I had always the impression that it was a modern teaching without any roots in other parts of the Bible. For me, as a Jehovah's Witness was a difficult concept to accept. Of course, this is not true. There are quite a few occasions where a form of rapture took place in the Bible. I will consider four, although there are more of them, two of the Old Testament in the Old Testament and two in the New Testament. Now, 
let's see them one by one. God always provided an escape plan for his servants, right? When the destruction of the wicked was imminent, as in the case of Noah's family and Lot's family, he's done it before. When there's a, a, a destruction coming of the wicked, God always provides a way out. Now, apart from these famous occasions, let's see the four I mentioned earlier, where you see a form of rapture. Now, the first form of rapture we find in the book of Genesis. We read in Genesis 5.24, Enoch kept walking with the true God, then he was no more, for God took him. So, Enoch experienced a form of rapture. God took him when his life was in danger. Another Old Testament account is the departure of Elijah to heaven. We read in 2 Kings and 2 chapter, as they were walking along and talking together, that is Elijah and Elisa, the two prophets, right? Suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven, okay? In a whirlwind, another form of rapture. Elisa saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisa saw him no more. So in this occasion, Elijah is being raptured, taken up to heaven. Again, God removed or raptured Elijah off this earth to heaven when his time had come to be assigned in a different location for service as a prophet in Israel. Now, these are the two examples from the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? The famous one is Jesus. He, he's been raptured at the end of the 40 days after his resurrec resurrection. As in 1 Thessalonians, we read earlier, clouds were involved in this occasion too. We read in Acts first, sorry, uh, Acts 1 and verses 9 to 11. After he had said these things, that is Jesus, while they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud caught him up from their sight. And as they were gazing into the sky while he was on his way, suddenly two men in white garments, that's angels, right, stood beside them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into the sky, will come in the same manner as you have seen him going into the sky. We may never have thought of it this way, but this was a form of rapture. And finally, we see in the book of Revelation, the rapture of the two witnesses, right? We read in Revelation 11 and verses 11 and 12. After the three and a half days, spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven say to them, Come up here. And they went up into heaven, in the cloud, like Jesus earlier, and their enemies saw them. I think these four individual accounts prove that the rapture is not a foreign concept to the biblical account, but rather a constant way of miraculous escaping, both in the Old and the New Testament alike. Now, it is impossible to exhaust the teaching of rapture. I, I just, in just one video, there will be many more in the future where I explain the uh, mechanics, uh, how the rapture works, and how it plays a very important role, a pivotal role, in biblical eschatology. Now, before I go, I will read you one final scripture where it clearly shows that Jesus promised his believers not a paradise on earth, but a removal from the earth, and a joining with him in heaven, with which what, what the rapture is. So upon his return, he's not going to enforce paradise on earth, but rapture. Let's see from gospel, the gospel of John, right? 14 and verses 2 and 3. It says, In the house of my father are many dwelling, dwelling places. 
Otherwise, I would have told you, for I'm going my way to prepare a place for you. Also, if I go my way and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you home to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Does Jesus promise paradise or panda bears here, like the wood star will have you believe upon his return in his second coming? No, he's not promising any of that. In fact, what he promises is a situation similar to the one we read in 1 Thessalonians. Jesus said he was going to prepare a place. We'll see in the future video what this place is. Also, Jesus also said he was coming back to receive us home to himself, which sounds awfully similar to 1 Thessalonians 4.17 where we read again, where the believers will be caught away in clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we will always be with the Lord. If the rapture is indeed a real future event that has massive effect to what we believed as Jehovah's Witnesses, it is a a faith-altering future event for us as Jehovah's Witnesses, Instead of expecting to go through the Great Tribulation and face unspeakable calamities, which is the constant teaching of the Word Star, there is a great hope ahead of of all of those in Christ to escape during the Rapture. I hope this article offered a useful instruction to the uh, introduction to the Rapture, the teaching of Rapture, and I will be returning in the future to add more to its uh, place in the end time events. Now, that, my friends, brings me to the end of this video. I want to thank you for listening to me, uh, guys, and I shall speak to you on Wednesday with more news on developments in uh, the Watchtower and the world, around the world. In the meantime, please like and subscribe so I can get more views, and you will find the link to these articles I mentioned earlier along to the link of this article below. Thank you for listening. And I shall speak to you soon. Bye for now.